Alrighty guys, and there it is, the new intro to the American Dream. The newest season of Armored Warfare is live now as part of Update 3.0, which just went up. Now, as you can see in front of you, I already have the Griffin 50mm. There are some pretty cool things beyond that, and I haven't even explored the actual American Dream missions or what that's like yet at all. I've just been going through the vehicles. So as you know, this was going to be the big addition to the Oscar Faraday Tech Tree. And what I didn't realize, even though I was doing videos and all this stuff, all the new vehicles are American. They point that out as they get their own set of missions and they're called the American part of the Oscar Faraday Tech Tree. That's how these vehicles are designated in the game. Which is interesting, obviously two are missing. That would be the Vigilante 9mm rotary cannon, which I still don't know why this vehicle isn't in the place of the TTB. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. But also, as you can see, the top tier Griffin did not make it, just a tier 8 AFV. But we are getting the M8 MGM-166, which is the experimental hypersonic kinetic penetrating ATGM platform. It's going to be, I think, the only ATGMs in the game that can beat APS. They're going to be incredibly powerful. Uh, it'll be really interesting to see how they balance it. And obviously, because that's taking so long, it's not in the tech tree yet. But here are, starting with the Griffin, you can get it through the Leclerc Proto. So if you've already have the Leclerc Tier 9 or even the, well, sorry, I forgot, the VCAC Mephisto, my mistake, you can just purchase the Griffin, which is what I did. Um, once you get through the M1A2 Abrams, you get the TTP. And the really nice thing is, is that this is unlocked purely through progressing 100% through. You don't need to waste your tier nine token on it. At least I didn't. So you are able, once you get, or if you've already unlocked, I should say, I just unlocked it today though. But if you already have the tier nine M1 a2C or AC, forget what the tier 9 Abrams is. Don't fear, you'll be able to just pick this up today as well. The only difference is that because of that, it costs 15 million credits to purchase a normal tier 9 vehicle. The TTB actually costs me 23 million credits to purchase. It costs as much as a tier 10. And you can see that right here with this tier 9 and this tier 10 they're going to be more expensive than vehicles that use the token system. Now, I can't really remember, let me check really quick. Yeah, so the French tech tree is the same way. Any tech tree that kind of uses just normal progression instead of tokens cost a lot more. I'm not really sure why Armored Warfare is doing that. It was just a little bit of a surprise to me, but honestly, not that big of a deal. So I'm going to be making videos on the Griffin, the TTP, and once I get it, the M113 Hellfire, but I'll show you this model in game now because it's actually one of my favorite models. Uh, it's the same as the NM142, only this time with the massive Hellfire missiles on it. Very cool stuff, but none of this is really important. The actual vehicle I want to show you the most is, of course, the GAU-8 or the M48JU8 Avenger. This is going to be the first rotary vehicle in the game, and it should be interesting. The reason I say it should be interesting is that I'm not entirely convinced that it's going to be completely overpowered, of course, because the new rotary mechanic is intended to prevent that. But let's just check some basic stats here. So I think it stayed exactly the same from what they told us. 240 millimeters of penetration for 50, 90, 72 damage. Salvo size is about three. Um, you get burst fire. You can do the slower rotation fire, which is different. Then I'm going to go into vehicle testing. I'm going to show you that burst fires, of course, you take longer to reload, or sorry, shorter to reload. You can fire longer, but three rounds. The other one is you're just going nonstop, and then your gun will eventually overheat and will take a longer time to come back online. Oh, I'm sorry, this is for the Griffin. <laughs> Completely messed that up. Hold on, what can I see? Here we go. 
I was like 50 I should have known I said that when I saw the 57 no 30 millimeters that's right okay so salvo size 3000 it's a lot more sense than three <laughs> 190 millimeters of penetration with 28 damage so this is actually a little bit different than what I expected uh, this is the one that has the gun will overheat if you don't do burst fire but if you do you'll be able to go back and forth between bursts a lot quicker than waiting for it to cool down that's rotary cannons i don't know how i didn't realize that it was the tier 8 <laughs> griffin but we're going to take this to the vehicle testing area and i'm going to just run through it and see what it's like and then that'll be it for this little news video because i'm going to want to start playing these vehicles right away um, I kind of like how they did the American Desert. It's supposed to represent Nevada where they are, and where the Russians are is actually Area 51, which I think is funny. Given the Area 51 raid that happened Friday, it seems kind of appropriate. Alrighty. So you can see right here to the left of the what is that called? The magazine bar, which is the blue line on my reticle there. Once that hits all the way up, the gun's overheated and you can't fire it. Now if I were to switch to burst, the bar actually takes longer to overheat, but nothing else really changes. So it doesn't really affect how you actually play the vehicle. And as you can see, just like they promised, you don't need to penetrate vehicles to do damage. Right, so I really want to see what this thing looks like when it fires. This is actually really, really cool. So. This should be an interesting vehicle to use. As you can see, it does take a long time for that damage to add up. But you can shoot pretty much any part of a vehicle, I think, and almost get away with it. Of course, this is... Oh, there's a Merkel. We'll try that. So they put the look Oh, so they did change it. So they actually changed what kind... It used to be that... You know, super easy to penetrate tanks just showed up in this. We'll see if it can pin the front of the Merkava. Yeah, it can. Do the turret run. And apparently, the front of the plane. Alright, so this is gonna be a devastating tank destroyer. Uh, very cool. I'm just having a great time playing with this thing. Even if it is just in the vehicle testing area, but remember that this vehicle, and I'll show you this right as soon as I exit out, is still the same tier 2 hull of the M48. So let's get out of here, and I'll show you that. Um, I'm hoping to be surprised and that they ended up changing the armor composition of the hull a little bit, just to be a little bit nicer, but we will see. I, I can even load the armor composition. I can't. But I should be able to see what its stock armor is like. Hull is... Actually, hold on, let me do this. Uh, defense. Obviously it has doubled... It has a thousand more hit points, but yeah, look, the hull is exactly the same at tier two, so they did not rebalance it at all. If anything, they made it worse in mobility. They made it a little bit slower, um, heavier, actually lighter, but with a worse hull traverse. So they've impaired its mobility a little bit, and its hull is, again, 110 millimeters of steel on the front, 76 on the side, 35 in the back. Turret gets 153, but... Even though the turret is radically different than the M48's turret and would, I believe, in real life have less armor, uh, they kept that the same. So be careful when using this vehicle in combat. You are essentially driving a Tier 2 tank at Tier 10. 
how that's going to play out and will Armored Warfare rebalance that in the future? I don't know. Hopefully they will, but we'll have to see. It's going to be a little bit, it's going to take me a little bit of time to actually get to it through this vehicle here, which I'm still not entirely enthused about. I know not a lot of people were. It's just kind of a very weird vehicle choice for them. But we'll see how it works. It gets pneumatic suspension, so it can go up and down, which is nice. Hopefully that'll be useful. And of course, there's no crew in the actual turret, so we should have some kind of protection there. And then lastly, you get all these consumables on the American, it's going to be hard to say, American Oscar Faraday vehicles. Just those nine other Oscar Faraday vehicles didn't get them, obviously. These just come with them. If you have to resupply it or not, I don't know. I'll find out because I don't have auto resupply turned off. Oh, I forgot. This is new. This is part of, there is no auto resupply. You can buy these, but for, it's either for PVP or PVE, and I'm going to have to go read the patch notes because I completely forgot. Um, the basic ones are free. They're free now, so absolutely use them. That's why these vehicles came with them when you purchased it, even though I also got the Tier 9 Abrams and it didn't come with them. But they should be free to mount, free to use. No resupply cost as part of the new thing. And then in PVE, there's going to be the brand new respawn mechanic. So I'll be playing at least the Griffin 50 millimeter tonight on PVE to get a feel for it. Hopefully I will get to show off that new respawn mechanic and see how that works. See if it actually makes gameplay a little bit better, a little bit more fun, or if it just complicates things because it gives people the ability to just rush and do whatever they want, or if Armored Warfare balanced the bots to be more difficult, because now you get to respawn, so it shouldn't matter how many times the bots knock you out. A lot of questions, a lot of interesting stuff, a lot of things changing in the game, and will continue to be changing in terms of balance, not only with the new rotary, cannon vehicles, but with the addition of the Vigilante and the hypersonic missiles. So please stay tuned for other vehicles, and content, just anything in general regarding this update, I'm going to be doing a lot, a lot of grinding and a lot, a lot of reviews and vehicle showcases. I'm very excited about this tech tree. I'm not as excited about the actual new campaign, but I'll be making videos of those missions. I might actually play the first mission tonight in one of these vehicles. And I hope to see you guys out on the battlefield and enjoying this update as much as I am. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Or subscribe to the channel if you want to get notified when any of those other videos I just mentioned are going to be uploaded probably either later this week or on the weekend when I have some extra time. And as always, I really appreciate your support. I hope to hear from you guys in the comments on what you think of these vehicles, what you think of Update 3.0, what you had hoped for, or just things that you didn't expect. Like, I didn't expect the, the um, hypersonic missiles to actually get put into the game. I thought that was going to be in testing for a long, long time to come, and it was just going to be a tier 10 light tank. So a lot of cool little things that are happening, and I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching.